Hello, everyone. I'm very happy that you managed to join the OCB course, our Common Baltic course. Our Common Baltic used to be one of the major educational activities for Coalition Clean Baltic since many years for mostly newcomers in uh, our member organizations. However, since a while, we decided that we will switch to a new mode, opening up, widening the scope and range of people participating so that it is not only open now for our members, but also to our partners, to a wider network of uh, mostly young people who wish to increase their knowledge, uh, improve their capacities, and learn more about the Baltic Sea, the Baltic Sea catchment area, and peculiarities of uh, both the sea itself as well as the basin behind it. Uh, right now, also, I wanted to share with you a couple of words about uh, CCB. I will just uh, use three slides uh, to tell you about what Coalition Clean Baltic is and what we are working with. So Coalition Clean Baltic, as you see from uh, this slide, has turned two years ago, 30 years. It was established in 1990 by a number of environmental NGOs, mostly from the western side of the Baltic Sea, with a twofold idea and task. And the first task was to represent major environmental NGOs from the Baltic Sea region at policy level, both regionally at Baltic Sea Marine Environment Protection Commission or Helsinki Commission or HELCOM for short. And secondly, to help capacitate, support, and provide exchange of uh, knowledge and resources to many Eastern Baltic uh, environmental NGOs that emerged uh, at that time. And just to remind you that it coincided with uh, a lot of political changes in the region, with the fall of the Iron Curtain between West and East, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, with regaining of the independence by the Baltic republics, and Surprise, surprise, uh, in many of the Eastern Baltic countries, environmental movement was very much connected and integrated into general democratic movement, the movement for human rights protection, and environmental NGOs actually played an active role in uh, the process of regaining the independence. Especially, this is very true for Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. With these two full tasks, CCB has continued to work since 1990, wasn't it ups and downs, since then, currently at this stage, we are 26 member organizations and observers joined together in a network. CCB by that represents 11 countries of the Baltic Sea catchment. You see the logo of logotypes of uh, those member organizations and observers on top of this slide. You can recognize, I'm quite sure, several of the logos from this slide. So we have big and small organizations, plenty of small, especially on the eastern side, but we also have a lot of partners, helping hands, and individual experts who are connected also to CCB network. On the bottom of this slide, you can also see the major sources of our funding. As a non-profit organization, we are funded by grants, and those are coming from uh, various funding and donor institutions, including European Commission, uh, Nordic Council of Ministers, including uh, Swedish national agencies, like, for example, the Swedish International Development Cooperation Agency, or Swedish Water and Marine Agency or Swedish uh, EPA or Environmental Protection Agency, as well as from different private foundations. And uh, those are also mentioned here, Swedish Postcode Lottery Foundation, for example, and Baltic Sea Conservation Foundation. A few more words about how we work. Sorry, <laughs> this slide appeared to be not updated correctly. So we are 26 organizations, not 24. And what we proudly also mentioned that we represent approximately a million people behind us, residents of uh, those 11 Baltic Sea countries, that through CCB are able to advocate for protection of the environment of the Baltic Sea area. They are able to advocate through CCB at both EU and uh, HELCOM level. We are doing coordinated actions and field work across the whole region with many organizations in one project or just few organizations. And just out of the examples of the work that we are carrying uh, jointly is a lot of actions related, for example, to plastic pollution or protection of threatened species. We're also doing a lot of awareness raising and capacity building through educational activities. And our com Common Baltic course is one of uh, examples of such educational and awareness raising. Currently, we are working actually not on seven working areas, and again, apologies for that. Right now, we are concentrating on four major areas, and those would be eutrophication, hazardous substances, biodiversity, and maritime activities. And the palette of our activities is presented here. And, uh, you see it also on the map. 
We work with protection of the harbor porpoise, the only Baltic cetacean that we have, so the only Baltic whale, and that's probably the only project that we are running within the Swedish, Swedish jurisdiction, in the Swedish waters mostly. Then we work also with activities addressing various hotspots, and uh, those could be uh, wastewater treatment plants, both municipal as well as industrial. Those could be large ports and terminals for handling fertilizers in bulk or any kind of other dangerous cargo handled in ports. We work on uh, promoting environmentally sound agriculture. And here you see also a snapshot of uh, the organic and uh, environmentally sound agriculture fair in Lviv. As well, we support the contest of the Baltic Sea Farmer of the Year in both Belarus and Ukraine. We work with plastic pollution. And here you can see also a snapshot of the activities related to monitoring and reducing inputs of microplastics to the Baltic Sea. We work with saving and protecting habitats of threatened species. And there you see also a snapshot with uh, a person standing in front of uh, a salmon creek where in Belarus there are a number of spawning grounds being protected and being restored. Within the last years, we are working also a lot on uh, climate adaptation, particularly addressing flood risks into river basin management plans and flood risks management plans, uh, various national and European legislation. We work and advocate for safe handling of large infrastructure projects, being a watchdog against violations of international uh, environmental law, including environmental impact assessment. Here is an example of the project that was supported in Belarus that was uh, addressing so-called E40, Inland Navigation Way. And we work also with integration of gender and social diversity issues into our work. And here you see the snapshot of activities in one of the protected areas where we are supporting introduction of accessible eco trails and other ecotourism infrastructure in the coastal areas and protected areas. Well, I think that is enough for the introduction, and uh, we will continue uh, with the program.